Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, YouTube. Here we are. I got an Anytone AT6666 10 meter mobile transceiver. Sorry, I'm getting distracted with my other radio on right now. <laughs> but, all right. I've had this Anytone now for three weeks. And the first problem was the mic. They just stopped keying up. I had to go in the radio, testing around, ended up finding that the ground disappeared. So I had to run a new ground on the inside of the board, not the mic, the radio side. Fixed that issue. It's been peaches and cream since then, until about 1 o'clock in the morning last night. It just started blowing the fuse out of nowhere. Yapping away, yapping away, and then click, nothing. So, I said, to hell with this, before I get anything else up, I'm going to bed. Went to bed, came back in here in the morning, plugged it in, everything worked fine. Like, huh, alright, I know there's a problem, let's figure it out. So, first thing, I just said, screw it, I'll pull the cover off, see if there's anything obvious. Didn't smell anything, didn't see anything, didn't feel nothing. So... I start keying up, talking for about 10, 20 seconds, and all of a sudden it sounded like somebody shot off a 22 in my shop. I'm like, holy shit, smoke starts pouring from the radio. So, unplug it, start digging around. It actually bent the cover for the heat sink on the MOSFET finals. So I pulled the cover off, noticed that two out of the four MOSFETs exploded right in half. Come to find out, these FQP 13N10 MOSFETs that are the new, better replacements for the IRF 520s are pieces of shits. It's what they're putting in all the newer radios that are high power fucking bullshit. It don't work. Everything that I'm reading, they keep popping. And what these companies or people are actually doing, not companies at least, but businesses that repair radios and build radios, they're taking them and swapping these with the 520s again. It's going back to the old school. So, <clears throat> I talked to my buddy, my radio tech. He said, come on over, I got a bunch here. So, we hung out for a couple hours, bullshit, and I grabbed some things out of there. Plus the four MOSFETs I needed. And now, here we are. I desoldered all of them, which was a pain in the ass, and I took them all out. And now I just replaced all of them with the new 520s and a little tiny bit of heat, bit of heat sink compound. The thermal paste, just a dab will do you. You don't need much, just a little bit. But a little dab will do you. You'd be surprised. Hmm. Can't find any information online on these radios. There's no service manuals. The only manual you can find is the one on the side of Home Depot <laughs> or basically just the owner's manual they give you which is two pages and just says hey and welcome to your radio well I don't know what to set my bias voltage amperage at whatever so I just wung it and I set my bias voltage at the gates of every one of these MOSFETs to 3.93 volts that's what one of them was already at, and I just copied the rest of them because they were within that range. I don't know where it's supposed to be. I'm fucking guessing. I'm not an expert. Um, just a do-it-yourselfer. Here I am, soldering this in now, new FETs. I'm using my TS-100 solder iron, which I always brag about. I love the fucking thing. Oh, if you don't like the language on here... What was he on? That's all. I'm sorry. But I don't need a filter. I ain't going to think of what to say. I'm going to say what I'm going to say. You want the flow or you want somebody to sit in here babbling on about bullshit? Well, I'm doing both, kind of. <laughs> well, now I'm just using some electric cleaner. I usually use rubbing alcohol, but I have none out here. Big old Q-tip in the screwdriver, just taking all the flux and crap out from between every joint. I don't need any problems on top of what I'm causing myself. 
but now I hook everything up and to my surprise it's working well I'm getting 15 watts less than I originally got but I don't care the original one fucking popped if this thing lasts a year now with me keying up every day at half power I'll be happy that's fine but as you can see it's not hard to do this stuff yourself and if anybody's got an Anytone Quad 6, I recommend you taking out the 13N10s before they pop and change them out with some IRF 520s. Because who knows what else you're going to take out and ruin in the circuit when these old ones pop. I hope this is helpful. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Come back for more. Comment, talk your shit, I don't care. Share this up to your friends. I'm going to make a lot of videos like this in the upcoming future. I'm getting into the amplifier building, power supply building, and repairing radios. And there's a lot of guys out here doing the same thing, but... Hey, it's nice having more knowledge out of everybody. Thank you guys. Have a great night.